Hello and welcome to episode 46 of the podcast. I'm Michael. I'm away. The fuck was I? I was like, my brain died for a second. <laughs> we are the Knights of Entertainment, a podcast covering your favorite and unknown movies, games, comic books, anime, and more weekly. We appreciate you being here and hope you enjoy the show. This is what we are covering tonight. Uh, we are going to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole of conspiracy theories for the Elder Scrolls today. You guys know what the Elder Scrolls is, right? <laughs> I know we haven't seen it in years. <laughs> Decades, some would say. <laughs> but before we do, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. You can also enjoy this show on YouTube, Spotify, Rumble, Odyssey, and more. We also have membership tiers on those platforms if you'd like to support the channel, or you can check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash KOE podcast. But let's go ahead and get into this. Alrighty. So we have 25 Elder Scroll fan theories that may or may not be true but some of them are kind of interesting okay so the first one we have is the dragon board was forged by gods huh so this theory offers another explanation of the origin and history of the main character this one sort of exists as a bit of a middle ground between the established and aforementioned theories this theory states that the gods forged the dragonborn that they were crafted by the hands of the deities of the world and were unleashed upon it when they were completed and though this would make them mortal it would also give them a connection to the gods that the players seem to want to establish throughout the games oh that's so instead of just being born of the world, oh, it was like a molded... Specifically uh, made to... Yeah. To have a connection to the gods. I don't know. I did love going around shouting at people. Quite a bit. <laughs> they didn't do a good job making the characters uh, morally uh, upright. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Fusroda did nothing, really. Mm. Like it never, it never really helped you much in the in the, in the fight. I'm being honest. I never used any shouts. I used a lot of bows and arrows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I'm very basic with my play style. People yeah. like they always like upgrade. Like these are like. <laughs> Here's, this is me, right? So everyone has all these fucking great like builds and all these awesome uh, like bleed over time and like. Uh, uh, and status effects and everything like in games like uh dark souls and all this stuff right and then you got me with a big shield and a massive sword just fucking swinging at everybody <laughs> just, I'm like, uh, basically i'm just all hands all yeah. the time. Like, uh, and I, it works for me i beat dark souls one with them <laughs> when everybody else quit i beat i beat bloodborne <laughs> just fucking swinging my little axe thing yeah i, I fucking tore through elden ring with a fucking massive, the sword I found at the beginning of the game, this long sword, uh -huh. in a fucking wagon, like 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 a, a couple of miles away from uh, the the the, uh, the tutorial area, uh -huh. that's the one I stuck with. I was like, oh, that's fine with me. It works. <laughs> Why everybody else is trying to upgrade everything? I'm just like, give me, <laughs> it's like I'm just just give me these hands. See, I play the cheat of always uh, being the sniper bowman, always. That's basically my thing for uh, yeah for uh, Skyrim was it? It just it was just fun. It's just easier. I like, can catch someone like a mile away. Yeah, and whenever you have the archery skill all the way up with max, uh, like uh, where you breathe in and yeah. you get the slow motion and plus everything. that fucking like plus like a times two point five extra damage if they don't see you sneaking and shit like this oh, tremendous upgrades where you can almost one shot a giant basically yeah like oh fuck and it's just like hits him in the heart <laughs> and then if you have a poisoned arrow or something like that it'll go along with it and fucking watch a fucking uh, one of those dragon lords come up out of his fucking tomb and just, <laughs> and just catch him in the fucking face <laughs> And then the the, uh, the effect of the, like where it's like the uh, the cinematic effect of them dying. Oh, that little kill cam. Yeah, yeah. That was fucking hilarious. Mostly when they had an arrow right through their face. <laughs> it's like they just woke up. Uh, mostly when you get to kill cam when it just finished with the uh, their animation of, of, of waking, waking up. up. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like instant, like just an instant fucking dead body. <laughs> like they have the arrow in them before they're like uh, fully done doing the stand up animation. Yeah, pretty much. And then it takes a second for the game to catch up. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm dead. Oh, <laughs> and then they just turn to dust. <laughs> it's like, damn. All right, uh, next one is the Elder Scrolls and Fallout are connected. 
They put, uh, this may seem far-fetched uh, and not one that they personally believe, but uh, some players believe that Fallout and the Elder Scrolls occur in the same universe, but that Fallout came first. Uh, these players do not buy that the Elder Scrolls aligns with a medieval period, but rather that they exist in a time long after the events of Fallout, which is when society has finally become... Uh, has finally started to rebuild itself. No longer scavengers and scorched earth, but rather thriving citizens of a new world. Hmm, that's cool. Kind of a, a more unique theory. There's no, there's no radiation, though. They said that should last like 10,000 years. I mean, you could be really far into the future, though, too. I, mean, I hope so, because <laughs> if you're walking through fucking El Skyrim and get fucking radiation poisoning, like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's what all the, uh, what is that ore that the, uh, the Dwemer found? That blue ore, um, God. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but where they turned it into different weapons and stuff like that, it was probably all radiated shit. <laughs> maybe that's what they, maybe they just fucking died from radiation poisoning. Uh, the next one is the Elder Scrolls Multiverse Theory. Uh, it's, uh... The, this multiverse theory attempts to explain that the fact uh, that the Elder Scrolls, which are scattered throughout the world, exist as tangible and accessible records of all of the possibilities which can be contained within each and every parallel universe in existence. It might be nice to get a hold of one of these when debating a major real-life decision in order to see how each, each path works out. So they're basically saying that each Elder Scroll itself... Is looking into another parallel universe. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, that's kind of a, a meta type thing. Yeah, so like a celestial computer. Yeah. At the center of everything. Yeah. That, you guys, that just records all information. Pretty much. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, the next one is the Thalmor want to destroy the pillars. So uh, this theory, which originated from internet gaming forums, attempts to explain their motivations. Um, the theory states that the Thalmor is attempting to knock out the pillars that are holding up the world, since there's uh, certain pillars that hold up the existence of um, uh, of the Elder Scrolls universe. Shut up! Like you have the White Gold Tower, you have uh, what's the one in High Rock? Um, well, yeah, it's been a long time since so that place got. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while for me too. I might, but... I might want to get back on it, uh, but if I do, you know me. <laughs> My brain will just fucking fall in love with it again. <laughs> but basically, their theory is that that's the Thalmor's whole goal is to destroy these pillars. Would they just kill them too? The what? Would they just kill them all as well? Is it just the fucking world mm, crashed? No, I think they would go to a different realm oh, okay. since they're elves. Fucking elves. Yep. And then we have the tragic fate of Lydia. Lydia, who Lydia? Remember who Lydia is? That that one helper that you yeah, had, that, that fucking, annoying one, the one that gets in the way every fucking time. Yes, <laughs> this this thing they put. Some players have found themselves expe uh, exceptionally frustrated with Lydia and yeah, no her memory or lack thereof. So frustrated, in fact, that they've attempted to figure out exactly what led to her being in such a state. One theory states that someone tried to wipe her memory at one point, did a terrible job of it, or a very good job as to. Uh, as her ability to process and retain information was relatively destroyed in the process. Jesus. Because <laughs> this character... Give her a fucking lobotomy. Because <laughs> this figure has found the balance between being a figure of pity and annoyance. Yeah, she's... Uh, it kind of just gets in the way. I mean, if we're just being honest, she, they just do with bad AI programming. Yeah. On Bethesda's <laughs> part. <laughs> they made a horrible companion. Yes, they did. With her specifically? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And I think she can only level up to, like, level 35 or 40. So. I don't know if you level up at all. Yeah, I think she and can. She dies so quick. Well, you're, in Skyrim, your uh, followers level up to whatever level you are. Oh. To a certain point. Uh, what's the what's the cat's name? Uh, the one that tries to give you the scrolls to blow up at the beginning. <laughs> what? You don't remember that the fire scrolls? I don't remember or, at all. <laughs> where uh, uh, he's one of the few I think that can get to level one hundred, I believe. Damn. Out of most of the other like followers that you can have. Uh, the next one we have is the Dwimmer will rise. Uh, what zombies? 
<laughs> what exactly happened to the Dwemer, and uh, are they actually extinct? According to most commonly spread theories, which have been floating, floating around the internet as of late, uh, no, they are not extinct. Some believe that they are hidden deep within the mines that they force the elves to build. Others say that they fled entirely, and others even believe that they have found a way to hide in plain sight. So a lot of people... I got, got two theories. One... They messed with the really high level technology and they ascended reality. Mm -hmm. So they went above uh, the normal state of being. Right. Or two, they messed with, with something, it's high level technology, and all their souls got uh, fucking encapsulated in their fucking robotic uh, creations. I could see that. So, like, their souls are now in, like, you know, like those soul trap yeah. uh, gems, but they had a different version that now they're all part of that, all robots. I could see that. But. In Morrowind, the third game, there was that one Dwemer, wasn't there? There was that fat one. Yeah. But there was also Dwemer ghosts that you could fight in, uh, in, in like the Dwemer uh, ruins. So I mean, there's they have, uh, they're still part of this reality. If they're ghosts, some of them didn't ascend. Yeah. Or I mean, it, if we're being honest, like they probably didn't have a good th theory yet, so they they just added that as a character thing. Yeah. Or like a little vil a little enemy to fight. Because wasn't that uh, the Dwemer that had the spider legs? Wasn't he on the plane of oblivion or something like that at the time? He was in a cave because of that corpus disease. <clears throat> yeah. That they had in a uh, uh, in uh the one that would get you every fucking time. And yeah, Merwin. Like you you were supposed to have it apparently for yeah. the main game. Or the main storyline, but uh, he was like just a fat, and lost his legs. He said he went out to an adventure and he came back to his hometown, and everyone was gone. Yeah, I think he went to a different plane of oblivion for the for a uh, oh, like a different then, yeah, and then came back and it's like where the fuck did they go, <laughs> and then being like the last person of your species. That sucks. <laughs> Plus, you got no dick anymore. I mean, Jesus Christ, what's the point of living? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, who are you gonna screw? To everyone else. <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> they got Argonians. <laughs> <laughs> the, the lusty Argo, uh, Argonian maid. Oh, God, that weird fucking books. Yeah, yeah. I read all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, the Mora is our friend. Mora? Mm -hmm. Armaeus Mora. That one guy? The tentacle Lovecraftian. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Uh, this theory uh, piggybacks off of an earlier theory, uh, one that has uh, basically saying that you're the evil character in the yeah, entire game. I mean, we're players, so yes, that's pretty much 100 percent true. <laughs> so uh, the horrors we've committed, the fucking war crimes we've perpetrated throughout the lands of Tamriel, <laughs> give credence they, to that. And they they put uh, step one is, after that's been achieved, we can move on to steps two and three. So you have step two that Mora is an evil little friend, and step three, the anonymous letters from a friend that you received throughout the game are from Hermaeus Mora. What game was this one? The, uh, well, it's a mixture of all of them, but uh, okay. Uh, that'd be Skyrim, I would believe. Interesting. How it's, you got a letter from a friend. Weird. <laughs> it, they, they, it, the theory is that it's really Hermaeus Mora doing it, where that's your friend hmm. <laughs> throughout the entire thing. There was, yeah, that weird octopus thing that you can talk to, like, that oozes out of, like, a wall or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's been so long since I've played. Uh, he's that Daedra. That shit freaks me out. But he's uh, supposedly a Daedra that exists because of all the knowledge within the world or something like that became like a, a conglomerate Damn. after the world was created there's like a lot of lore yeah, <laughs> or Elder Scrolls in general is just packed <laughs> yeah uh, the next theory the dragonborn orchestrated everything so <laughs> there is a rather popular theory floating around that states that all the events of the opening sequence of the game were staged or rather set up by none other than the dragonborn himself yeah i got myself arrested yeah you're finally awake <laughs> <laughs> why would they do such a thing uh, some suggest that it was an uh, uh, in, in indigo of the character's uh, penchant for all things evil, while <laughs> others simply believe that it was all done in good fun. What are we, a Daedric prince just having fun with the lesser beings? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I guess in a meta way, we kind of are. Like, we are an entity beyond their yeah. understanding. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's fun. That'd blow your brain right there. It's a hugely meta, like, look. Like, yeah, like a hugely... 
<laughs> Ooh, that's wild. Uh, the next one is the Dwemer blinded the elves. All of the elves that work in the Dwemer run uh, caves are blind, but why is that? Some believe that they were simply born that way. Others believe that it was a product of living in the mines for so long, whilst others believe that something a bit more sinister was happening. These people believe that the Dwemer purposefully blinded each and every one of them so that they would never see the realities hidden deep within those caves and mines. Talking about the Falmer? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, they were blind? Yeah. Little fucking... That, that's why you could walk past them if you were quiet. Golem bastards. That's exactly what they're all. I hate them all. <laughs> I killed them all. And I slaughtered out. them like animals. Oh, I hated the like bugs. Like Anakin Skywalker. I killed them all. <laughs> I hated the bugs the most. Though. The women and children, too. <laughs> Just everyone. You do, though. <laughs> you kind of do. We're fucking war criminals. <laughs> the next theory... Are we the villain? Yes. Yes, we yeah. are. Uh, some players took the main character's twin with morality to heart and began to question whether or not uh, they were a good person at all. Uh, though it is common for the main character or playable characters in a game to be good people who do the right thing unless the player has something different in mind, not every game follows this pattern. Some believe that the main character of this game is actually the villain of the game and that uh, we are not as pious as we'd like to believe. We're not as pious. We, of course not. No. We do, we're, you're I'm part breaking up people's houses to steal their shit all the time. And you're part of the Dark Brotherhood. Yeah, I would commit murder. <laughs> Just going, just <laughs> shanking people. Yeah, shoot someone for no reason <laughs> and just dip out. Uh, the next theory is the Dragonborn is a true god. Uh, though it is important to say that not everyone agrees with this theory, some people believe that the main character is not mortal at all. Therefore, mortal ideas of morality should not apply to them whatsoever. These people believe that the main character is a god that has descended on the world in which the game is centered around him. Now, there is a, a bit of a debate on whether they uh, are there to help, hinder, or have a good time. But since they are the god, morality kind of goes out the window. That's just another meta yeah, for the, that's basically what we are. Yeah, but you're basically only, a god within the game. Not only that, we have like high levels of omnipotence within that world. Like yeah. We know everything of that world. Yes, and what they're gonna do yeah. because we played it multiple times. Yes, damn, that's meta as fuck. Isn't it that? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, when you we, really... we can we can die and then come back and then yeah. the enemy is still thinking as they that's the first time they're meeting, but that's the fifth time we fought them. Exactly. I guess we that, are. That's, that's weird, ain't it? That, that, that theory is a hundred percent true. Yeah. That's why some of these theories are true. Some, eh, could be. Uh, next one is never trust the dragon. This theory states the dragon who sits atop the throne of the world is actually a super evil and a villainous character. Due to his backstory, including him decimating humanity and his constant need to remind us to never trust the dragon, some players have begun to wonder whether he has truly turned his back on his own kind. Maybe he is just being honest and wants to teach mankind how to fight back, or maybe he just wants his next siege to be a little more challenging. Come on, Parthenax? Yeah. Okay. He has that weird that phrase, but it's like, uh, what's, what's some more... Or what's better, to be born good or to overcome your evil nature and become good? And become good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's full of shit. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the next one is Titus set everything up. The emperor. Yeah, the emperor. Titus Septus or something. Yeah. Like the 11th. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you, the good people of the internet, remember Titus? Yeah. The emperor whose defeated, uh, defeat caused him to sully his reputation past the point of repair. Well, some people believe that the hired attempt on his life was orchestra orchestrated by Titus himself in order to save face. Look, he was old, he was tired, and there was no way that he was going to save his reputation on his own during his remaining years. Oh, you talking about the he's talking about Oblivion Titus, not the new one in Skyrim. Would that be the one off of, of Oblivion? Yeah, he, okay. he must have got... Yeah, because that's the old one that was trying to, like, he, that assassinate from the Brotherhood. Yeah. But he fucked up because they did kill him. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of went too far. <laughs> <laughs> but a politically disguised end to one life would make him a martyr a sympathetic creature and not someone you could be so easily blame for stuff so he wanted to kill him he, he what wanted to die as a martyr yeah. that makes sense well what yeah because that strengthened the empire you ended up finding the, the heir apparent yeah helping him push back oblivion so yeah yeah so that was pretty believable <laughs> uh the game is the elder scrolls is the next one <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a stupid title. Let but. me let me guess. The, the, they're saying that it, Elder Scrolls is real, and w- that the uh, the the cartridge itself, the, the actual video game, <laughs> somehow uh, found itself in our world. Is that what it's trying? <laughs> so they put. Okay, so this may sound a bit weird, but bear with me. There is a theory that states that the game itself is the real life version of the Elder Scrolls. This theory states that the game itself is an interactive version of one of the many scrolls which can be found throughout the worlds that act as an anthology of the world's lore. These scrolls hold more powerful legends and stories about the world in which the game is set and the idea of playing through one of uh, choose your own adventure type things is a very exciting version of it. So yeah, like Jumanji basically. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a weird theory. <laughs> Super meta. There's been three of those so far. <laughs> three meta ones so far. Uh, the next one, the bug jars might have a purpose. Right, look what happens when you don't give us a new game. <laughs> look, 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 look what you do, Bethesda. <laughs> you start making people go fucking insane. They fucking lost their damn mind. <laughs> Uh, the next one is the bug jars might actually have a purpose. Bug jars? Yeah. Don't remember that. Uh, it's uh, bug jars that have runes on them on the bottom. Hmm. Okay, so they put, ah, the bug jars. These objects have confused players for eons. Do they have a purpose? Will a purpose eventually be patched in? Or are they meant to just uh, be another object within the game to add a bit of realism to the world? Well, one of the current and most accepted theories on the matter is that a special and uh, game-changing use for these infamously vexing bug jars will eventually be patched into either current or future versions of the game. Many think this purpose will be explosive. So they, uh, the theory goes is that if you put the bug jars in certain cities and then you do a ritual, it'll blow up everything. <laughs> like a nuke? Kind of, yeah. Huh. <laughs> People have went insane. Like Fallout 3. <laughs> well, I mean, they already think that it's another Fallout. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, the next one is what happened in Rorikstead? Rorikstead sounds familiar. <laughs> That's that murder mystery one, isn't it? Uh, well, this is that town that has nobody in it, really. Oh, okay. Uh, so they put, okay, so we know that uh, something happened in Rorikstead, and it was bad. And whatever that happened, uh, whatever that something was, it may or may not have involved the Daedra. But what happened? Some theories state that the land was wiped in order to get rid of the Daedra who lived there once and for all. Others claim that the Daedra found the land uh, after the event had already occurred. But one thing is for sure. This place is absolutely spooky as hell. And they will never set foot there again. Because <laughs> there's it just like nobody there. It's just like there's an that, abandoned... There's that lighthouse that freaked me out. Uh, at the end of the... Uh, you know, by the shore on the uh, western sides or the southern... You go in there. It's his warehouse. And like, uh, they're just dead bodies. Like, someone mysteriously killed these people. And like, <laughs> that's the only time in the video game I was ever scared. Really? Because it was like, it was real creepy. And like you go downstairs the, the lighthouse and there's a wall broken open and you go through there and it's just a fucking bug. I can't believe I killed them all, apparently. <laughs> it's just creepy walking around with dead bodies, you know what I mean? Just like, what the fuck happened here? Like in, in terms of like, you walk in like on dead bodies in like a fucking tomb or something, right? Yeah. It's like all these fucking adventures got killed. But like on, in a regular house, you're like, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> fucking blood splatter everywhere or some shit. Kind of right. like whenever you first see the, uh, what's his name? Uh, Malak Ball. For where you go into that house of that priest, shit starts flying around. And oh everything. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you kind of like you like uh, you kind of expect some weird shit like that. But yeah, just. <laughs> but then you go farther and farther, and there's the the altar at the very end. That was creepy. Yeah, I remember that. That shit was fucking hilarious, actually. <laughs> uh, the next one is the Daedra of Rorikstead. Delving a bit further into the Daedra specific theories, there are several attempts at explaining uh, what their role in Rorikstead has been. Some theories just involve casual awe and occasional dark magic. However, some theories go beyond that. One theory states that the Daedra moved into town and began using the women of the town as offerings for their special meetings. They convinced the people to go along with it and what was uh, what has been left with their spooky nightmare is what you see now. Huh. Where it, they, they used it to basically like a sacrificial yeah. area. I can see that. I mean, the Daedra have done some creepy shit. So. Especially in Oblivion. Yeah. That's by the work. That you go into the plains of oblivion on that one. Yeah. And those play that place is all those places are fucking horrific. <laughs> like no wonder they want to leave. Uh it wasn't um 
oh what what the hell is her name the one that uh bothers you as soon as you find that fucking orb for her oh yeah i remember that chick oh my god she's so annoying you've been summoned or you're called or some shit oh my god like every gamer that has played any of the elder scrolls the minute they see you regret it it's like man it's like it's that time again huh (laughs) meridia yeah, I guess that's her name. It, oh my god! It's funny, like yeah, like that. It goes to the meta thing yeah. of us being like godlike. Yeah. Like, oh man, not you again! <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Because it's like you open it up and it's Meridia's beacon, and, and it's now, like, like you oh. know, eventually, like yeah, like it, it's gonna show, like you can't stop it, like it's yeah. gonna show up eventually. <laughs> it's like a recurring shit. Like you it's reach like, that one level, and you're like, "Damn it, there it is!" And I think it's like level twenty. And like it's immediately. Like, Fuck. Like, Dawnbreaker's a good sword if you get it. Because, like, mostly when you're going into all the tombs and shit, it lights the shit on fire. But I wonder how long it can go without, like, if you don't open any chests or any. How long before. It'll be the first one you open. <laughs> yeah, like, it'll, like, immediately. <laughs> like, you just, like, you, like, let's say you never get anything out of a chest. Yeah. But then, like, anything, like, uh, quest related, you're like, fuck. <laughs> I open this motherfucker. I know it's going to be in there. I can't remember if you have to actually take it though or not. It's automatic. Yeah, that's what I thought. You can't stop it. It's like, it's like your mama, where it's like you just want it to end. It's like just immediately, like there it is. (laughs) Uh, Tomorrow, tomorrow I come to barter. It's like son of a bitch again. And then she fucking takes you up into like space. Yeah. Which is like the first thing you're like, oh, this is cool. That's like the fiftieth time. You're like, bitch, if you don't set me back down, I got shit to do. <laughs> oh yeah, the reason I brought her up is because her plane of oblivion is apparently like uh, an over like exposed version of uh, Tamriel, where like uh, the colors oh, like are super too bright oh. and everything. I never thought of that. Can I could check it out again. Yeah. Uh, the next one we have is the tribunal propaganda. <laughs> tribunal God. This theory is a bit more fun. The theory states that all of the lore that we learn about the world whilst playing the game is actually nothing more than propaganda created by the tribunal. For the tribunal. (laughs) This propaganda was meant to manipulate both the player and the in-game citizens in deciding with the proper side. However, uh, either way, it is a fascinating theory. It is important to always question your sources and ask yourself uh, whether or not you can trust your narrator. If you do that, you'll get, you, they'll take you. You'll, you'll, you'll be abducted and you'll never see it again. <laughs> if I remember that tribunal from Merwin, it was some guy, some v- chick, it was and Vivek. Vivek, yeah. That's the only one I remember. That's the only one I know. <laughs> Vivek is the only one that you actually remember. I killed him once. Did you? I saved him before. It took a lot. And then when I did, it told me, the, the game told me I broke the game. <laughs> Like it literally did. Like on the corner side, it says like you 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 can no longer finish the main storyline because you killed Vivek. I'm like well, fuck it, I'm Vivek now. <laughs> but you actually end up killing the other two. Yeah, you do. One of the guys is that that like like the uh, the beast master or something mm-hmm. in the in up in the northern island. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, he's like a huntsman. You can find like his bear form, his wolf form, or whatever. The other one's in that town, that like city mm-hmm. that you go to. It's like, it was like the first time I've ever had DLC in a game. And like they had, it was like the game of the year version of Merwind. Yeah. And it was like with a brand new map. Like you had that, that physical map you could pull out. And uh, it had all the same stuff, but it had a new island in the very far northwest corner mm-hmm. that you, that I fucking swam to because I'm a moron. <laughs> I didn't know there was a fucking boat. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking swam there all the way. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was another place that was not on the map at all that you had to get teleported to. And once you went there, the other map disappeared completely and it was just a map of that whole city. So it's like the like the capital of Merwin. Yeah. But there was it was you couldn't reach it from any point other than teleportation. Yeah. It wasn't on the map at all. And you kill her there, you kill that guy up there, and Vivek you tell Vivek he's like, Oh damn. They were my homies, but you gotta do what you gotta do. It doesn't use, like, him to, uh, like, disappear away from the world or something like that. No, he stays, because he has to for the main storyline. I'm saying at the very end of the storyline. Vivek? Yeah, doesn't he leave at the very, very end? I don't remember, actually, what he did. Pretty sure. The butt-ass naked dark elf. Well, uh, half... uh, half chilling on his fucking throne. Yeah, well, I was gonna say he's half and half because uh, didn't Azura transform his uh, race into the Dark Elves? 
So, yeah, yeah, something yeah. Like that, yeah. Yeah. And he still had like half of his face was original and then half of his face was dark elf. Huh. Never looked at his face. <laughs> yeah. I remember how disappointed I was when I fought Dagathur. So they, they built him up, right? To be super hard. Like like he was like the, the guy of guys, right? He was like the, the fucking main man. And I go up there with fucking uh, Sunder, which is the hammer. And I fucking hit him one time, right? And fucking buckled his knees. He's like, <laughs> oh, my fucking knees. And then I just fucking beat the shit out of him on the ground. Yeah. He never got back up. And I was like, well, damn, that was... <laughs> <laughs> that was easier than I thought. <laughs> it was the most anti I fucking... I was, it looked like I... <laughs> I got broken his house and I fucking beat the shit out of him <laughs> and went and went left. That's how easy it was. Like, so I got beat some old man to death. <laughs> uh, all right. The next one is uh, cults helping the postal apocalyptic world. So, uh, though we delve into greater detail on this theory a bit later in the article, there is a theory that states that the world in which this game occurs is a post apocalyptic one. The theory that uh, they're going to discuss in this. Um, uh, is the one that states that the absurd amount of cults that exist within the world are simply the survivors lasting the attempts to rebuild society and find something to believe in when one has nothing. It's, I mean, the, the civilization pretty, seems pretty well fucking, you know, organized. I, see, I, I would put that down as a, a stupid thing. Yeah, like, there's no way it's a post-apocalyptic. I mean, like, if it, it was, it's like rebuild into an actual... Well, maybe after Red Mountain exploded. That that one just destroyed Merwin though. Yeah, but like a post apocalyptic for them, but oh yeah. But everybody else. Their whole country's gone. Yeah. <laughs> just wiped away. It makes me wonder if I had had something to do with that. You did. Because that was a never rain. You and did. I buckled Dagatha. <laughs> uh the next one is uh keep an eye on Hogney. Hogney. According to this theory, Hogney is a very bad man, and though he can be trusted to a certain extent, Wood should never purposefully anger or wrong him, for one might end up a uh, shish kebab. And that is putting it to be the most pleasant way possible. Fans spotted several things amiss with our interactions with him. From his unpleasant obsessiveness and uh, obsessions with the organization, uh, he has a member of... Uh, to the nature to of his job in the first place. Many players have deduced that he uh, may have a flair for ending someone's life. And Hogney is somebody that you see in, uh, what is it, Rivers? The first t- little town that you get to. River Run? Yeah. Hogney? Yeah, the old man. I don't remember at all. <laughs> I think I burned, burned that whole city to the ground. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? Uh, the um, one thing uh, I didn't like about the new the Skyrim, right? Yeah. Well, you couldn't kill everybody. No, but they have that uh, yeah, they have the mod up. that you can. No, that's cool. But they always had that fucking buckle effect, right? Yeah. Like, man, that sucks. Yeah. There's also a mod where you can uh, whatever you catch on fire actually burns. <laughs> they watch the whole city just fucking yeah. go up in flames. There was a dude that went through and just burned all the white right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like castle walls and all. <laughs> just dust at the end. Uh, the next one is Abandon the Companions. Yeah, I did that. I, I, used to, I always like going solo anyway. Yeah. Uh, there was a theory that attempts to explain the reason why the Companions are so few in number. Essentially, they, are, uh, they were once an impressive and incredibly large group based upon commonalities and similar thoughts and beliefs. However, when those beliefs narrowed down to the obsession with going full beast mode and turning into creatures of the moon, many were not down for that way of life and had to bail. That caused their numbers to dwindle severely, which only made those committed to the cause so much more into it. So real confused. Do you remember who the companions are? Oh, those guys. Yeah. I thought, I thought you meant like just your regular companions. Like your companion that follow. Yeah, I'm like, I, <laughs> just abandon all your companions. That's what I did, yeah. <laughs> you being all those fucking wolf people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the theory is that there used to be a whole bunch more, but once those uh, certain few started getting obsessed with it, everybody left. It's like, yeah, fuck y'all. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I didn't like being a werewolf either. Yeah, it was kind of... Mm. Really limited your fucking. Although, if I had to choose, I would choose to be the werewolf over the vampire. And they're both fucking ass. The, the vampire was ass. Like, <laughs> really ass. Like, you couldn't do nothing. Like, you try going into a fight. Because I tried to play as a vampire mm-hmm. for like 20 minutes after I had gotten that. <laughs> I had, uh, what's her name? I turned me into a vampire again after it was part outside of the story. Yeah. I went up to one fort. To go in there and complete one quest, got my ass kicked. 
<laughs> Jesus. Because you can't re- you can't replenish your health super fast or anything. Oh. So like you have to uh, to actually kill somebody to drain their blood and stuff like like it's just it's more hassle than I need to be. <laughs> you know the worst being a vampire Merwind. Like yeah. first of all, you had to find these places, and back then they didn't have markers. No. So I used the real map on the in the the, the you think you gave him the booklet, like the actual life. Uh, yeah. I know. I know, know Merwin the back of my hand. <laughs> I could traverse the whole fucking terrain. <laughs> yeah, I found a where I found a vampire clans. First of all, they always attack you. Yeah. Unless you're part of their fucking group. Mm-hmm. But once you become infected, you wait a few days, then you become a vampire. They're like, oh, what's up? Can you join our fucking. There's like three clans or something. I stepped outside in the middle of the day, <laughs> and like the only reason I didn't die instantly was because it was a cloudy day. But my health burst into flames. <laughs> like, like there's no way to explain it. Like, you know, like you see your health go lower and lower, right? Yeah. Like the, you can see the progression of you getting weaker, about to die. Yeah. This was like it was like red for full, and then it was gone. Like in a blink of an eye, it even it even drained down. It was I was just almost dead. I fucking turned around and went back inside and almost fucking collapsed on the ground. <laughs> you made the mistake one time, and I never became a vampire again. All right, next theory: um, Elder Scrolls focuses on the gray areas. Uh, in most choice-based games, the gray beards, <laughs> the gray beard, yeah. <laughs> It is incre- incredibly easy to decipher which choice is the morally upright one oh. and which is the morally questionable one, uh, as it is usually pretty easy to pick one exclusively throughout the game. However, this game does not make it so easy and often tests the boundaries of morality entirely. So, uh, it, it, it questions the morality entirely. Uh, some players believe that this was done intentionally in order to focus on the gray areas of life and morality. And that that's just, true. Feel like, like here's the good one, here's the bad one, is what I've always seen them do. Maybe like a third option should be like, kind of good or bad. Yeah. But there's been some games where it's like, you do this and it's a hard one. Yeah, like The Witcher. Yeah. That is a true, like, constant, Black or white. Like, uh, no, like gray. Or gray. Like, yeah. no matter what you choose, you're going to fuck someone over, but you, that's, you don't have any choice. Yeah. But I had a guy fucking, either I save all these kids... And uh, this woman dies or something. Then her husband hangs hangs himself in the fucking uh, back of his cat. Like it's I'm like, like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> or, I, or I let these evil witches have these kids, and then they'll pr- protect some. I don't. I can't explain it because I don't remember it very well. But it, either every choice fucked you up the ass. So yeah, no matter what, it's a gray area. Yeah, like it was just like hard, like every like which is the less evil one is what basically what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that Elder Scrolls, de- like, there's a few things that are more questionable, but most of it, you unless, like, okay, if you want to f- finish the whole game, things are questionable <laughs> automatically. Like, uh, to finish the whole game, you have to either become part of the Dark Brotherhood or not. So, or the Thieves Guild, or, like, to actually finish. Oh, like, all the, uh, the, every fucking storyline? Yeah, to actually finish every storyline, yes, you would have to make some kind of... Here's my great trick, being a godlike being in Merwin, in uh, Elder Scrolls, was every time the Dark Brotherhood would give you the contract yeah. that you were not allowed to read, I would save it, I would read it, and then I would reload it. <laughs> because if you gave him the letter while it was open, like, oh, I see you read it, so I can't trust you. But if you gave it to the letter sealed, so I always knew what I was doing morally. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> 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 All right. The next one is uh, Shea Gorath and Dragonborn are one and the same. Uh, now, this theory has more or less been confirmed by the games itself, but some people still feel like it is up for debate. This theory th- states that the main character from Elder Scrolls games and the character of Shio Gorath from the Oblivion game are, in fact, the same character. This theory can be, proved, be improved upon when combining uh, with one of the aforementioned Dragonborn origin theories. So basically, they're saying that you become Shio Gorath. How can I become that guy? If that guy doesn't that guy fuck with me in um, uh, Elder Scrolls or in uh, Skyrim? Yes. Do we just fuck it with himself? Yes. <laughs> He's so fucking bored. He's just harassing himself. 
Jesus. <laughs> uh, the next one is... Is that a Scottish guy, right? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the one that you fucking slap in the face? If you attack him, he'll just send you up in the, the sky and drop you? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. The next one is, uh, what is Mike? Uh... <laughs> There's a, uh, let's see here. It says, okay, I know that fantasy series have ridiculous age slash lifespans, but uh, some have serious questions about Mike. This character has been around for an exceptionally long time, and it goes beyond the level of suspicious uh, suspensions of disbelief uh, that most people can afford the game. So, what is their deal? Some theories explain that the character is an adept time traveler that is always there to help a friend in need, while others claim that the character has long since passed and we are simply interacting with the spirit form after their lifespan has reached its end. The fuck is Mike? Mike the Liar. I don't remember him. He's the uh, Khajiit uh, monk looking character. Oh. Where you just randomly find him. You say, well, what's up, bro? <laughs> you want some skooma? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not. I don't think he's one of the characters. Like, He's just like, uh, so nice to see a friend. <laughs> That's all he ever says. Huh. Like he's, But he's been in every Elder Scrolls game, I believe. I hadn't like the same that. character, Mike the Liar. Either I've met him and don't realize it, or I because I, I barely played more Oblivion, but I played more Morrowind. Yeah. In Skyrim, he was in Morrowind too. I remember him in Skyrim. I don't remember him in Morrowind. Yeah. But then again, there was those crevices that you. There were still places there. Yeah. If I had a choice, I'd probably play Morrowind over Skyrim. I wish they would redo. Because there was just so much like secrets, like that you had to go on your out of your way to find. I, w- I wish they would uh, do a remastered version of it though. Like if you're going to remaster anything, you might as well remaster Morrowind again. Because the game has a lot of legitimacy still, I think. I'd prefer them to keep it like it is. Just hard as fuck. No, so blocky. The, the, the image of... Cliff, oh. cliff racers everywhere. Uh, like, leave everything the same. Just update the graphics. All the graphics. <laughs> the graphics sucked. Mostly when you go back to it now, it's like old school. You like do the doom. fucking crab walk. <laughs> Sideways. Uh, the next one. Uh, Silverhand branched off. From the companions, this theory states that the uh, states that the anti supernatural zealots who call themselves the Silver Hand were originally members of the companions, but branched off or defected when they became obsessed with becoming creatures of the night themselves. This theory makes sense as it could be the reason behind the fervor that pushes their anti supernatural nature. Uh, perhaps when they saw uh, what they saw happen to the companions was such an abomination that they decided to form their own little club in order to put a stop to it. Mm, maybe the ones that are going after the uh, all the uh, werewolves and stuff like that yeah. in the world <laughs> they're super weak yeah they were extremely weak and even carrying the swords was useless because they were heavy as fuck in the game super weak and useless and I'm like damn you guys are terrible yeah and you kill werewolves Woo. you can't even kill an Argonian like me although I will say the werebears were really fucking difficult in the, the island yeah on St- uh, Solstein man they would just fucking run up on you just out of nowhere I was like, come get these fucking hands. <laughs> See, what I did is I perched above on one, you know how like you, you, you go to areas you're not supposed to mm-hmm. in Skyrim and go to the tallest edge of the mountain and then where you can just barely get an arrow <laughs> over the edge and just start raining arrows down on their asses. Like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> but that is all the fan theories that we have for today. I doubt that's all of them. Oh, I'm sure there's a like whole... 12 billion of them at this point. Yeah. Just, just bring out number six. And, and, and then you won't have the crazy people that have their tinfoil hats on where it's like, I know there's more to this. Man, and then you're like, well, wait, well, let's wait for number seven. <laughs> seven might not even be in our life. To- uh, <laughs> at the, at the, at rate, the this- rate we're going, yeah. no. <laughs> no. We're, we're waiting for Elder Scrolls six and we're waiting for GTA six. Yeah. They'll probably drop it on the same day. Probably. And fucking consoles will blow up when you try to play them. <laughs> and Elder Scrolls 6, when it does come out, $300. Uh, 800 gigabytes. <laughs> Where you need to have, like, the, the most high-end computer system ever to even play it. It's just not like a fucking jet engine taking off. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> Everybody, hold on. <laughs> I have to get a hold of Linus Tech Tips to be able to even have a computer that works for it. He, the guy, and all, 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 all the video that he does right it's just like him sobbing on a chair because he can't figure it out either <laughs> that would be hilarious though. I don't know man it's like it's if it's still six years away we'll be in our fucking 40s 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like, Dad, we want to go to the park. Motherfucker, I'm playing Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> the old lady that uh, plays Skyrim and stuff like that, she'll be long gone from this earth. No, knowing how the world works, right, it's cruelty, she'll die the day before it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> or, or she'll be the only 100-year-old over there playing the game. The only thing keeping her alive is to finish the game. <laughs> Clocks in 100 plus hours and she fucking croaks. <laughs> But that is all that we got for today. Anything else to add before we head out? Well, they're making GTA 6, but uh, if you guys need an actor for GTA 7, I'm available. <laughs> I'll be the main character for GTA 7. I'll do whatever you, I'll do, I'll do whatever you want. Whatever you need. I'll do whatever you want. I'll make you feel good. I'll make you, I'll make you feel good. Just make me feel good. Just make me feel good. <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you guys later. I'm dead serious. Make me part of GTA 7.